important thing to remember when adding or subtracting fractions is that you must have a common denominator. You need common denominators so that your pieces are the same size because the denominator is telling you how many pieces it takes to make a whole. When they are different, it means that the pieces that you have are different sizes. So if I'm looking at two thirds and say I'm needed to add one sixth to it, if we think of these segments as fixed pieces that we can't move around, I can't take this shape and try to plug it into one of these pieces here because it's too big. I also couldn't take this little piece and try to plug it in here because it's not big enough to take up the whole space. So what I need to do is figure out the first number that both of my denominators can turn into. This means I need to rely on the multiples. Generally, we're used to dealing with factors, numbers that we can divide out of a common number, but that's not what multiples are about. It's about making numbers that are the same. So factors can be used for division. Multiples are numbers that create these larger numbers, and it's when we're looking to create bigger values. So I see, if I'm looking at 3 and 6, what I can do is look at my numbers that create, are created by 3 and my numbers that are created by 6 and find the first one that they share, that they create the same thing. So 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12. Looking at my multiples of 6, 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18. When I'm looking at this, they have a shared factor of 6 and a shared factor of 12, but I want the smallest one because I want to keep things as simple as possible. It's far easier to work with 6 of something than it's 12 of something. So 6 is my lowest common denominator because it's my least common multiple. And so instead of having three pieces here, I need this to be six pieces making the whole. Well, what do I do to turn that into six? We're only ever going to multiply or divide to change the size of a fraction. So we're going to multiply it by two. That is going to give me a denominator of six. But what I do to one half of my fraction, I have to do to the other to keep my proportions the same. So now I go two times two, which is four. So 2 thirds has been turned into 4 sixths, and I can add 1 sixth to it. And all that's telling me is I now have twice as many pieces. So if I go up here and I make a line, make a line, make a line, I now have six pieces making the whole, and how many pieces do I have? I have four. The amount that is shaded has not changed at all, but now each one of these pieces is the same size, and I can then add. And when we add, our denominator doesn't change, because again, it's just there to tell me how, tell me how many pieces make up this entire shape. So shaded and unshaded. The only pieces I actually have are the numerator values. So here I have a 4 plus a 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. So 5 sixths is my total value. Because this, I can plug in over here, fill it in because they're all the same, and yes, I have 5 out of the 6 pieces. Now, if ever possible, you do want to reduce this fraction to its simplest terms, but we can't shrink 5 and 6 by anything. So now we're going to apply this skill to adding these fractions. We have 5 twelfths plus 1 third. Different denominators, so that means that's our starting point. I need to figure out what's the first number that 3 can become, that 12 can also become. We know that it can't ever be smaller than our biggest value, because 12 can't multiply by something and shrink down. But 3 can multiply by something and turn into 12. So that means I figure out what factor do I multiply 3 by to turn it into 12? I multiply it by 4. What I do to one half, I do to the other half. So now I have a 5 twelfths. Nothing needed to be done to this because this was already the right number of pieces. And we add 1 times 4 and over 12. So now my denominator is the same and I just add my numerator. I have 9 twelfths. We always want to shrink wherever possible, which can be a little confusing because we're asked to multiply to make bigger and then at the end we're asked to divide to make smaller. 
It's just the way it works. Okay? Um, so what number can I divide out of 9 that I can also divide out of 12? Well, 3 is a number that creates both 9 and 12, so it is a shared factor I can divide out. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. So the final solution is 3 fourths. Here, 3 can't turn into a 4, 4 can't turn into a 3, but the first number that they can turn into is a 12. So I'm going to multiply the left by 4 and the right by 3 to give myself 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. And denominator never changes. I add my numerators together. 8 plus 3 gives me 11. The only number shrinking 11 is 11. And 11 is not a number that I can multiply by something and make 12. Or at least can't multiply a whole number by it. So 11 twelfths is going to be my solution here. Hey, it's the same denominator, so our pieces are the right size. We just go ahead and add straight across. Never adding our denominators together, it's just how many pieces make up a whole? Well, 5 plus 7 means I have 12, okay? You have two different ways you can do this. Generally, I like to start with reducing what I have. Um, so I'm going to look at what can I divide out of 12 that I can also divide out of 8. They have a shared factor of 4. So when I divide 4 out of 12, I'm left with 3. When I divide eight, 4 out of the 8, I'm left with 2. 3 halves is an acceptable answer. In the answer sheet, 12 eighths is also an acceptable answer, but it's not ideal. We really always want to strive for a reduced fraction when possible. And because the directions didn't ask for us to convert to a mixed number, an improper fraction is completely fine. But if you would like, you can convert this to an improper fraction by saying, I have three pieces, it only takes two to make a whole. So if I take two out of three, I can take it out once, leaving me with one piece extra out of the two pieces it takes to make a whole. So either one of these would have been an acceptable answer. So again, we're going to start with creating common denominators. If I look at my multiples of 4, I get 4, 8, 12, 16. My multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18. The first one they share is a 12, so 12 is my lowest common denominator. I'm going to multiply then the fraction on the left by 3 and the fraction on the right by 2 to get those desired numbers of pieces. So now I have 9 twelfths plus 10 twelfths. And when I add those together, I get a 12 as a denominator and 19 as the numerator. Uh, I can't divide anything out of 19 other than 19, and 19 is not a number that creates 12. So I could leave it at 19 twelfths. If I wanted to, I could convert this to a mixed number. 12 divides out of 19 once, leaving me with seven pieces extra as leftover, and out of the 12 it takes to make a whole. So one and seven twelfths, okay? Here, I look at this and there's a gap I know that 2 can turn into a 10, so 10 is going to be my lowest common denominator. So I only need to modify one of my fractions by multiplying it by 5. This first fraction is already the right number of pieces, plus 5 tenths. When we add it together, we get 12 tenths. I see that both of those are even, so I can divide a 2 out of both of them, leaving me with 6 fifths. If I want, I can then convert that. I can take 5 out of 6 one time, leaving me with one piece extra as my numerator over the 5 pieces it takes to make a whole. And finally, 6 and 3. Well, I know that 6 can't get smaller, but 3 can get bigger to turn into a 6. So I'm going to multiply that by a 2. 5, 6 gets to stay the same because it had the right denominator. Add our numerator. We get... Um, 9, 6. And what can I divide out of 9 and 6? Well, they're both created by 3, so I can divide 3 out of them, leaving me with 3 halves or 1 and 1 half. 
When it comes to mixed numbers, we do not need to convert them to improper fractions in order to use them. They can stay in this form. We just can't keep them in this form when we need to multiply or divide fractions. So I'm going to, we always deal with our fractions first and then worry about our whole numbers. So I have a one-fourth that I need to add two-thirds to. We save the whole numbers for last. They're separate. They're off to the side, basically. And then I find my lowest common denominator, the first number three and four, both turn into or create, and that's going to be 12. So I have three twelfths plus eight twelfths, giving me 11 twelfths. So 11 twelfths is what the fractions add up to, and then I had one whole and two wholes, so I add those together. So my final answer is going to be 3 and 11 twelfths. So I solve them separately, and then I combine them back together at the very end. Here, same process. We start by dealing with our fractions first and creating the common denominator, which is going to be 6. So we get a 2 sixths plus a 5 sixths, which is going to get us 7 sixths. Well, because I'm dealing with a mixed number and I also have whole numbers here, um, I can't leave this improper. So I need to convert this to a mixed number. If I have seven pieces, how many times can I take six out? One time. When I take those uh, six out, I'm left with one. So that becomes my new numerator over my unchanging denominator. So I now have one and one six from combining my fractions, and then I have a three and a one. So I have a three plus one plus one and one six. So I just add all my whole numbers together to get five and one sixth. Now we're gonna switch gears and move to the subtraction of fractions. The same starting process applies. We have to have a common denominator so our pieces are the same size. 3 and 4, common denominator of 12. So now we have 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths, leaving me with 5 twelfths. I cannot reduce 5 and 12 by any shared factor, so that's my final answer. Here I have a common factor or common multiple of 8. So 4 and 3 are going to get multiplied by 2, so I can have 6 eighths minus 5 eighths. Denominator is the same. I only actually have my numerators, so I have 6 and I need to take 5 away, leaving me with 1 eighth. Now here I have a mixed number and we might not need to worry about that one. So we're just going to focus on the fraction component. I have a two thirds and I need to take one sixth away. Start with creating a common denominator, finding a common denominator. It's not six. That's needs to be a two, needs to be a two. So this becomes four sixth minus one sixth. Denominator is the same. So I can subtract my numerator my numerators, and I have 3 sixths. Well, 3 sixths, 3 is half of 6, so this reduces to 1 half. Now, I still have this 1 whole from that original starting value, so that means my final answer is going to be 1 and 1 half. Sometimes the fraction that we are being asked to take away is bigger than the fraction we have. So if we look at this, I have one whole and one half, and I'm supposed to be taking three quarters away. Well, in this half, there's not enough here to be able to take that much away. So that means I'm going to have to borrow from this whole value. Well, as a whole, I, the piece isn't the same as these other pieces. So what I do, what I should start with is looking at creating that common denominator, okay? So um, one half, or between two and four, four is the first number that they can both turn into. Two and four can turn into. So that just means I'm going to double this fraction. So I have one and two fourths, and I'm supposed to take away three fourths. So that means I took this half and I cut it into four pieces. So now I have two out of four. My piece is not the same size as these pieces. So this has to get broken up. There's two ways I can do this. 
I can convert this to an improper fraction by just saying if I have one whole and two fourths, how do I convert this to a mixed, uh, an improper fraction? I take the denominator, I multiply it by the whole number, four times one is four, and then I add the numerator, which is two. So that's gonna give me six fourths to then be able to take three fourths away. I could also think of it as, well, if I have one whole, how many pieces does it take to make a whole? Four. So that means this needs to be made up of four pieces. So, and if I have all of it, guess what I have? Instead of one, I have four fourths. So if I have four fourths and two fourths, four and two gives me six out of the four it took to make a whole, and I have I can now take away the three-fourths. I personally think just taking and converting the mixed number to an improper fraction is easier than being like, oh, because four, four-fourths is one whole. It's just simpler to do this. It still gets us the right, the right answer. So now we can go back to solving this. Denominator is four, six minus three is gonna be three. So three-fourths is my answer. And that makes sense because if I'm supposed to take away three pieces, I take away those two and then I take away one here. For the three pieces I take away, how much is left? Three fourths. So it works out proportionally. Now here, let's go ahead and go straight to converting the fractions to common denominators. And our common denominator is going to be eight. So I need to multiply this second fraction by two. So I have one and five eighths minus six eighths. Well, if I have five, I can't take away six. So that means I need to take my one whole and break it into more pieces of equal sizes to add to the five here so that then I have enough to take six away from. So again, the easiest way is convert the mixed number to an improper fraction. Eight times one is eight plus the five. Now I have 13 out of eight. And if I take away six, Eighths, 13 minus 6 gives me 7 out of the 8 pieces it took to make a whole. So 7 eighths is my final answer.